to get on stage. <laughs> She's going to talk about the Phoenix Society. This is something I think you're actually launching it from here, right? This, Today. This, okay, so we're talking about. Uh, private societies. She's been in development of something called the Phoenix Society, and she's going to talk about that today. It does somewhat fall into the line of what the Leadership Council vision is as well. So again, more morphing of our brand creations, uh, and then also talking about um, solutions for res local resiliency. So um, let's give a beautiful, warm welcome to this amazing creature, Tara Carton. <laughs> to be playing right now, okay. which I'm not used to. I'm used to like more being on the back of a flatbed in front of some tyrant's building. Uh, but today, oh, there it is. Okay, going to be launching the Phoenix Society. Uh, and I want to say something, you know, like most of you, I've been walking a path my whole life, trying to hear my soul's voice. And, and I think all of us can realize that we've been walking, uh, how do we do this? Hang on a second. Just green? Forward, red, backwards. Thank you. Uh, first time, uh, walking, you know, towards this moment in time. And actually today is a special day for me because today is the day I became a mother for the first time 12 years ago. Awesome. And, uh, and so it's actually quite a perfect day to birth and launch officially the Phoenix Society, which we've been working on for a couple of years. It's also a particularly poignant day because Two years ago, um, on May 1st, 2020, Freedom Angels had a second anti-COVID con uh, protest at the California Capitol where we were arrested uh, along with 32 others. And I want to tell you, that moment to stand there in resistance and refusal to move from the California um, Capitol was one of the easiest decisions I ever made. Yeah. I stood there and I said, if I believe I'm a free being, and if I believe the Constitution protects my First Amendment right to stand on our state's highest public town square, and, def and that's where it's most fervently defended, it's quite simple, I don't move. Yeah. And whether it's standing strong against tyranny or moving into action to build the world that we want, it's the same energy, it's the same frequency, it's the same yes to life and no to tyranny yes to all that is true and good, and no to anything that causes suffering and destruction to another human being. So, and that was my son's 10th birthday. Yay. And you know, I, I, my whole life I had, you know, carried a, a path within me where I wanted to heal suffering or find justice or bring health and balance. But when I became a mother, that fire came in to me that was like the pride, like the mother lion, where never before had I had that energy activated to that level. And that is really where we're at right now. We need to activate the energies of like the parent, the mother, the father, whether you've had a child or not, it's the same energy to protect life, yeah. to protect the most vulnerable, and to create an environment that sustains that through existence. So, uh, with Freedom Angels, I'm also, my partner Denise Aguilar and I run Freedom Angels. We have an initiative called United Counties of America, where we train people on how to engage locally, how to course correct, develop resolutions, and different um, and, and ordinances to, to bring the world that we want. We also have been working in the private domain for a couple of years, building structures. I think, you know, you might see me, if you do know me, you know me for the fight, but what I spend most of my time is in the build. And um, also, you'll, tonight you'll see Kevin Jenkins, who is my uh, co-founding partner in Urban Global Health Alliance and Freedom Travel Alliance. And, uh, and he'll be here by the skin of his teeth. And um, I lost the, oh, there it is, okay. So, so Phoenix Society, so I've been working with communities for the last two years on how to bring yourself into freedom. And one of the things I love nothing more than to create structure and infrastructure that helps us to have a clear vision and move over target. That's what the Phoenix Society, how I designed it. So I'm going to kind of click through, bear with me. Okay, I'm going to try to read this too. Our mission, and I've got a quote here, you all know it, it's the Buckminster Fuller quote. You never change things by fighting existing reality. To change something, you build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. That's why we're all here. So the mission 
um, of Phoenix Society is to build freedom, terrain, and culture. We need to have, like building terrain, you'll see at the end I talk about terrain being everything. We know in our bodies, in the soil, it's everything. Well, the first, <laughs> first lesson of that came in war mapping. In a war, on a, when you look at the battlefield, terrain is everything. When you're on strong terrain, you don't just sit down and, and enjoy the beach in Florida, you lock in the protections and, and that we need to move forward. When you're in difficult terrain, you have a different set of strategies. But what we can do right now, no matter where we are in this country, no matter where we are in the world, is we can build terrain and culture of freedom. That's mindset, that's systems and structures. So the Phoenix Society is designed to help us map the freedom family within our community and quickly find each other in the wilderness so we can link arms and move two solutions together. Thank you for the, taking that light off, that helped. Um, Reimagine and hold a clear vision of the world we want and build for our children and humanity. A free, resilient, abundant, soul-aligned society that functions as a support structure and not a cage. Quite, quite self-explanatory. Uh, and then to create infrastructure that connects the free world and supports our ability to choose the freedom family first. We all want to support each other, but sometimes we don't know how or where to go to do that. This is a tool that will help us to, in that process. So our plan. Okay, this is an Edward Abbey quote. If America could be once again a nation of resilient farmers, craftsmen, hunters, ranchers, and artists, then the elite would have little power to dominate others, neither to serve nor to rule. That was the American dream. Yeah, yeah. So that is right, neither to serve or rule. And so, so the plan of the Phoenix Society, it's a membership-based model for people choosing freedom. And it's also a real world and online members community, skills, solutions, and try building events and programs, training to create Phoenix Society's models locally, and a mastermind to advance evolving gold standards. That's one of the main things we've been working on the last year is to work with communities locally and help to build the structures for it. The plan is also to build Phoenix Lodges across the country. That's our own, but this is something we recommend in every community. I'm sure you've seen in any work you've done, it's important to have space to gather. Where you know we need to not only build tribe, it's like back to the tribe, back to the land, back to the skills. Well, you need, if it's a community center or a piece of land, they're really important. There's ways to get them. There are people that already have them. We have to find each other and very clearly be choosing that and trying to create it. So then the next one is, this is the community function of the Phoenix Society and any independent satellite organizations like it. It's to sit above the business entrepreneurial space. Think of, these are just examples, like the business spaces, your learning centers, your healing clinics, your stores, food producers, that's at our business level. But above it, you all know this space really well, and most of you have worked in it or, or a part of it, is that community-based organization, nonprofit, church mission workspace, social clubs, that's the area that Phoenix Society is designed to take over. We, you know, there's, Good work's going, like building gardens for schools. Well, let's build gardens with schools with the intent on training our children around freedom, around all the different pieces. So it's going to have the same work. And, and the idea is that if we, if, we hold, if we take control of that space, that's how we're building our local terrain, our local culture. Uh, as you can see, pillars of parallel private society, based on faith as the foundation, and you can see there's, this is just a, a sample of some of the things that are covered, education, finance, water, energy, food, all the things that you've been talking about for the last couple days. I do wanna make a special shout out to a friend in the audience, Raven. Um, he is an expert on, on new technologies, on energy and other solutions. This is a critical one because in every bit of the action that we take, we should also be holding the vision of we know those solutions are out there. We refuse to let them to be hidden, suppressed, or keep it kept from humanity. This is part of the culture we have to create. It's part of the terrain we have to build, that we have our mind over target on focus of what we're really talking about and how we're gonna get there together. So, 
core focus of Phoenix Societies, again, it covers all the topics because every bit of them are related. Uh, but the core focus is food, education, and health. These are the easiest ways to help weave in your community and help them quickly build tribe, build solutions together and skills. And um, for example, on food sovereignty, we've been working in Northern Nevada already on a Phoenix Society model, helping build it up and linking multiple communities together. It's, oh, I'm going to have to say this quote. This is from Meme Culture. My son tells me meme culture is a thing. So meme culture. Grandma survived the Great Depression because her supply chain was local and she knew who, how to do stuff. <laughs> so um, so it, there's a whole topic of what to do on food society. You know, we focus on how to grow your food, how to process your food, how to store your food, how to hunt your food, how to share and barter your food, like the whole list of things. But the core focus of the, the work of a Phoenix Society model is around, in food sovereignty, is around victory gardens. We all know the story of how in World War I and II, quickly, within two years, 40% of our nation's food and produce, produce was being produced on people's properties, on their own property. That's in two years, it's really quick, and we have the ability to do it even scale even faster now. Community seed banks, these are critical. Through human history, it was a precious, um, a precious family and community component to carry open pollinated, locally adapted seeds from person to person, through generation to generation. You can now, in your own community, even if you live in an urban city and have just a patio, you can, with two or three, two or three pots, you can be working to help your community target the evolution and protection of seeds for your microclimate. So a community seed bank process is a really important tool. And Community centers, oh wait, back one. And farmer and rancher networks. Uh, we're, when you form into an alliance together in a Phoenix Society type model at that level in a community, so think the NGO level, the CBO level, you quickly have a group of people who function like a buying club. And the idea is to identify all the food producers in your region and start to reach out together and say, we'd like to build a relationship with them. Not only can you end up in buying direct relationships, but you can also ask them to plant out 2,000, 5,000 pounds of potatoes for your community. There's a lot of woven together pieces, but the biggest part is to connect each other. And then education. Um, I'm also the founder of 2015. I founded a Waldorf school and it's gone through a lot of um, process in the last seven years and I've learned a lot. In the last two years we've been helping a lot of enrichment programs and it's really important. Before I read the quote, this is from Rudolf Steiner. It says, our highest endeavor must be to develop free human beings who are able of themselves to impart purpose and direction to their lives. The need for imagination, a sense of truth, and a feeling of responsibility. These three, form, uh, these three forces are the very nerve of education. That's Rudolf Steiner. 100 years ago, he created Waldorf Education as, an, as a social engineering mission. Uh, he, he was fighting a corrupt establishment, couldn't get anywhere, and he decided the best way to engineer world peace was to create an education pathway for children to be able to learn and hear their own soul's voice and calling. And then within that, they would recognize that in each other and existence, and that would foster peace. And all of us here know that our soul's voice, its mother tongue, is freedom. Yes. And so it's critical that we teach our children and we create an environment that is nothing short of the, the, the truest connection to creation, to soul, that there is. Then health, uh, Michael Tierra, health is a reflection of the balance between the different aspects of ourselves, body, mind, and soul, and our environment, our experiences, and associations, and our food. I think we all know that. And the, the idea of a, the health component of a Phoenix Society is providing wellness resources that can flow between the community. 
It's also wellness education because there's so much to help bring people over target to true foundational health. It's also practitioner networks. Again, mapping the free world. And this allows people to open up. It gives you an opportunity to, and a structure to start to reach out in your community and, and talk to people and identify where they stand. Because I, I am opposed to division, except I do believe we all have to make a choice and decide are we standing on the side of good or evil. That's the division I'll take any day of the week. And we need to be able to discern what is of evil and what is not. And we need to make a public, we have no more time for private choices, private decisions. We have to publicly stand together on this. So I'm, I can't, even though we talk about the private, oh, I should say, the Phoenix Society is designed around a private domain structure. You can start it out grassroots. You can move it into more official structures. Most of you know very, are very comfortable in programs or processes of building a grassroots group to fight your local tyrants or in whatever manner. This is no different. This is moving to the solutions. For 25 years, I've worked in various ways around building and organizing. And one thing I know is that it's, as you might know, it's hard to get people to show up when you want them. You're like, I, year after year, I've been like, why aren't there a million people tearing down the pavement to get to the California Capitol um, and stand with us to protect our kids? I know they're out there. I always know they're out there. Um, but if we can create the structure that fits the need, because for two years I've been working in this private structure, and what's happening is a revitalization for people. Because when you're suddenly working on how to grow food in your home in a way that you never thought of before, or how to create a new curriculum or enrichment program for children, um, or, or you know, new skill sets, or whatever it might be, you're sleeping better at night. And it's as important as the fight. But I do believe that we have to stay civically engaged. We have to hold a mirror up to the world that in the agenda that seeks to control and commoditize everyone. And we are truly at a divergent point for humanity. The totalitarian technocracy and the transhumanists are real, alive. It is the agenda we're fighting. It seeks to disconnect us from our soul, from source, and it seeks to, you know, to completely enslave humanity. That is what we're up against. I think, like me, you're not going to accept any of those slave terms, are you? No. <laughs> no never. Um, and so, it's we're going to move forward, come what may. And what I'd like everyone to know is, you you know, so often I hear people saying, "I feel so alone." And we're not alone at all. And I want you know, I want people to know that. If we have the ability to connect together, then you. you will be moving to action in ways that, that take care of your family, your community, and oh, one, back one, I want to show you. So engage locally. Let me switch to this. Terrain is everything. We talked about that before. There are some key concepts to keep in mind. A food bill of rights. Maine passed one recently that was really good. Natural born human is a protected class status. That's something I've been seeking for five, seven years, since 2015. And it was starting in the vaccine fights for our kids. I thought it was first going to be uh, vax versus unvax. Protect the unvaxed, you know, protected class status. I was deep searching into it in 2015, 16, and I found out that the transhumanists and AI were already developing their own protected class status. And I said, oh my gosh, this is bigger than I thought. So this is why on natural born human is you have, by divine design, we were all born unvaccinated. You have this the fundamental and defining protected class. You have the right to stay connected to source, to your divine design. And I think it's, it's, it's important because the last one here I have is digital bill of rights. We all know the world we're entering into, the, the technocracy, is available now, the technology is available now for a full authoritarian technocracy, as well as a, a you know, entire evolution of the transhumanist agenda. That 
is these conversations seem really big. What I, I like to say is there is no, we don't have to wait for Nuremberg, we don't have to wait for a Supreme Court decision. Those things don't happen on their own. They happen from us, from the ground up. We decide that. We have those conversations at our kitchen tables. We have them in our communities. We have them by our very action and everything we choose. Freedom is a choice. We are gonna choose freedom in everything we do in the Phoenix Society allows us to control that community space sitting above businesses. It helps to activate the gifts of the community. Everything we need is in every person in every community right now to live completely free and regenerative. I do wanna say on, this, on food sovereignty, it's all regenerative, no till. We teach everybody the way forward because there's no way of doing this without these healing regenerative systems. It's the only path. And we have to, with one voice, be saying it over and over to each other, and we do it in our every actions. It's really, um, it's really an important thing to know that when, when we engage locally, we can change everything. I actually say, I agree with Newsom with one thing. At the beginning of the pandemic, he said, localism is deterministic. And it is. And we have all, everything we need already in the community. We have to map each other. I look at it like this. You know, when I was young, I wanted to be like the pioneer who would, like, why wasn't I born when I could like cross mountains and see landscapes for the first time? And then I realized, we are in a bigger moment in time of that than there ever has been. Right. There is the biggest blank spot on the map, and our job is to find each other in this wilderness, lock arms, and keep a clear vision of where we're going together as we journey. That's what we're doing. Thank you, because every one of us here and beyond are the pioneers that are starting on that journey together. You remember Robert Frost? Two paths diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled the, by. The road less and, traveled. And that made all the difference. Well, that's us. Yeah. We're standing together at that divergent point. We're not gonna let humanity go into the dark night of transhumanism. <laughs> Complete commoditization and enslavement. Yes. No. Never. No. So we're gonna take that path together. None of us are alone. I'll tell you when I stood on chairs in 2019 and started peaceful civil disobedience when we formed Freedom Angels against this very agenda. In that moment with these boots, I stepped on a chair with these boots on and a dress and I realized I was free. Yes. Because I said, nobody can silence me. They can't shame me. They can't disconnect me from my knowing. They can't stop me. I, they can arrest me. In fact, I'm expecting it any minute. <laughs> but they can't touch me. I'm a free being. And I will do everything I can for my son, for all children, and all of humanity to live free yeah. and not as slaves. Yeah, 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 Tara. for just one second, please. Yeah. What I want you to know. <laughs> feel this, you know what you felt for two days? You know what you feel every time that you stepped on the side of good? You stood there, you are not alone. And remember, when you stand up, when you're finding a moment where someone is bringing something that is not of good, when you find yourself against a tyrant, you remember, you were standing with every one of these people in this room and with millions upon millions across this country. And even beyond that, you were standing with the whole fabric of existence yes. through all of time, every person that stood. You know what? In the 1960s, Fannie Lou Hamer said, nobody's free until everybody's free. That's our marching quarters. You know what Harry Tubman said? If you hear the dogs, keep going. If you see the torches in the woods, 
you keep going. If you hear the voices calling behind you, you keep going. Don't stop. Never stop. If you want a taste of freedom, you keep going. Yeah. Right. And when you know, carry that with you. Build models of the Phoenix Society in your community to hold this energy while you're sitting there processing rabbits or learning how to blacksmith or seed saving. You stand and you say, hey, what are you doing about that trust? Or how are you locking in this other piece? We share that info. But know as you march forward, you are standing with all the greats of history, from Jesus to Martin Luther King to the mother who refused to get off in the bus yeah. and every other person. This is the walk we're on. This is the path. And it is the most beautiful journey. I know it's complex and confusing to think about where we're going to go on how we're gonna make all these pieces. When well, you know that question, what do you know? I know we do it together. I know we gotta do it together. And I know, and I'll tell you, when I stood up on the chair in 2019, and when I was arrested in 2020, I knew I wasn't alone. I knew that people stood with me through all of time. We chanted for hours in 2019, and I wanna tell you, a portal opened in my soul, and I felt Every one of you, I felt all of existence and time standing. And that was the kind of no that is the greatest yes to life. We will never, never be disconnected from our soul and our source. And that's the journey we're on. So let's take this together. I tell you, I'm with you every step of the way. In joy, in peace, in every structure we build, we build in freedom, we build in, build in peace, and we bring it, build in soul alignment. Yeah. You feel that? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. The website is brand new. It's going to take a few days to make the domain. You know that? If you want to get connected, we're also putting up a new IG. Stay connected. All right. And, and we'll build this together. Yeah. Tara Thornton, everyone, thank you so much. Woo!